How's it going guys? Dragon Star Production here, back with another What A Video, and obviously you guys read the title, so you know we are going to be doing part 6 of What If Dragon Star Was In Dragon Ball. And if you haven't seen the other parts or you just want to catch up, there'll be a full playlist right in the top right corner of this video, and if this is something you enjoy, please consider hitting the subscribe button as well as hitting the like button. They both only take a couple of seconds and help out the channel immensely, and with that said, let's get into the video intro. Alright, so last time we left off with two ships heading off to Namek, one of those being the group of Goku, Gohan, Krillin, and Bulma, and the other being myself and Raditz, and we're actually taking the gravity ship thanks to the help of Dr. Briefs, and this clearly sets up a rather different path to Namek, and also a big change heading to the Namek saga. First one being, Goku won't be as strong as he was coming in, but he'll also be on Namek much earlier. However, even though Goku isn't as strong, he's still sitting at a power level of 15,000, which will be more than enough to help in the early grounds of Namek. So, with that said, I actually think that Goku would actually help the gang actually manage to find the village that Vegeta destroys before Vegeta destroys it. However, that doesn't mean that Vegeta wasn't on the way to destroying it. That means that these two will be meeting up right in the middle, having their first encounter since the battle on Earth. And using their key sensing, they're actually going to notice that it's each other, so your drone Dragon Balls weren't enough, were they Kakarot? Scuffs Vegeta. Goku though manages to keep his cool, thinking that it's going to lead to a fight. But instead it actually leads to Vegeta trying to make an alliance. However, Vegeta's not doing this because he wants to befriend Goku and the gang. It's because Vegeta wants to outsmart Goku. He thinks that he can easily manipulate him after seeing him let him go on Earth. So Vegeta actually is planning to use Goku to fulfill his wish of immortality. Meanwhile, I'm headed through space with a guy that wants to kill me. So, I don't have a headache or nothing, but anyway. Raditz, actually over time, his anger actually calms down. And we actually begin to actually start training. Raditz was shocked at my growth, but I was more shocked at how fast Raditz was actually growing, knowing that, well, from well, what I know of Raditz, it's kind of a bit of a weakling. But with that said, Raditz was growing quite shockingly fast, and this entire time, all Redis needed to do was to train. Both of us were growing to new heights, maxing out at 100 times gravity, yet being able to move and ease. By the time our ship actually planted on the ground, our power levels were set at a whopping 30,000 for Radis, while I was maybe even higher at a more massive surprise of 90,000. In fact, it stunned both me and Radis. We speculated the possibilities of why I got so strong as what I did, but all Radis could say that I might have got Zenkai's like a Saiyan which I take note of, but before we cover that, we gotta cover the rest of what happens before we arrive on Namek, because that's pretty important for our planting ground when we arrive. Because Vegeta joined his alliance with Goku earlier, this means the encounter with both Dodoria and Zarbon happened with Goku, Krillin, and Gohan. And with Goku being there, his Kaioken actually is going to outmatch Dodoria by a large amount, meaning that Dodoria isn't going to be a threat here whatsoever. However, instead of Goku fighting again though, Vegeta is actually going to be the one to step up to fight against Zarbon. And their fight actually takes place pretty much the same until the ending. When Zarbon transforms into his ugly form, he stomps Vegeta. But Vegeta doesn't escape. Because of the trio of Goku, Gohan, and Krillin, they were able to hold off Zarbon until Goku pushes himself and his Kaioken to his limit, going to times three at this point. And this is actually when Goku would then blitz Zarbon as Zarbon falls short in this fight, meaning that Frieza has no choice but to call in the Ginyu Force, which would give Goku and Vegeta both time to heal up while Krillin and Gohan swoop around to find the rest of the Dragon Balls. So this then leads to Gohan and Krillin actually finding Dende's village, but more importantly, the two would actually find Nail and Elder Guru thanks to Dende. This then leads to Gohan and Krillin both getting their potentials unlocked and also getting the second to last Dragon Ball they needed. So what does this mean? Well, this gives the two the same boost that they had as canon, except the two were already stronger, meaning that they're going to be much stronger here. Krillin and Gohan feeling stronger than ever after getting their potentials unleashed would then fly towards the last Dragon Ball which happens to be in Frieza's ship. The two realize that this ball may be out of their reach as Krillin would then suggest turning around and regrouping since Goku isn't healed. As for Gohan, well he really wants to rush in at the ball but Krillin says that it's smarter to stay back risking their lives now wouldn't be smart especially when they're here to revive all their friends. Gohan then turns to Krillin and nods, as the two would then fly back to Bulma and the ship waiting for Goku, except it wasn't Goku who came crashing down. 
No, it was five space pods. Krillin and Gohan go out to guard the ship when the Ginyu Force would arrive, introducing themselves. Also, Captain Ginyu reveals himself as the captain, and also, by the command of Lord Frieza, they are here to find the Dragon Balls. Krillin and Gohan both are in a panic as all their Dragon Balls are inside. They aren't strong enough to fight all of them at once, so luckily for them, Ginyu actually reports back to Frieza while the others stay behind. The odds are still not in our hero's favor, but it looks better for our heroes now that their strongest member is gone. But the Ginyu Force is surprisingly fair, staging a one-on-one -on -one match between Goldo and Gohan. And when the fight actually starts, Krillin expects the others to jump in, but they stay on the sidelines and watch, almost as if they're judging the fight. Gohan, by this point, clearly outclasses Goldo in power, but not so much in technique, as Gohan actually charges at Goldo just to be stopped in his tracks thanks to Goldo's telekinesis. Goldo then throws Gohan back as Gohan then gasps for air. Gohan Goldo quickly rolls back onto his feet as Gohan instantly realizes that brute strength may not be the answer to this fight and is definitely not going to be the best approach. So instead, Gohan decides to combat Goldo's brain with his own. Gohan then darts in as if he's learned nothing just to use a after image technique as this causes Goldo to lose track of where the real Gohan is and when a key blast actually nails him in the back, Goldo goes falling back right onto his face as Gohan then kicks him right in the stomach, declaring himself as the winner. Which leads to the next member of the Ginyu Force stepping up to fight, this being Raccoon. And he tells the little runt that they are going to fight together, wanting a challenge. So Gohan and Krillin do just that. Gohan's power level is probably going around 21,000, as Krillin's is at probably around 15,000. So the two aren't as strong as Raccoon, but together, they're definitely going to be able to hold him off, at least for a little bit, until Goku or Vegeta would arrive. But to their surprise, it was me and Raditz who arrive first. When I arrive, I stop the fight. Alright, tough guy, you've had your warm up. How about you fight me now? Raccoon is intrigued by the challenge, so accepts it. Before darting in, though, I turn to Raditz, telling him to talk with Krillin and Gohan. We have a lot of catching up to do, and I'm sure they have a bunch of questions, considering, well, Raditz is here. So, with that said, Raditz actually explains all that's happened to Krillin. Meanwhile, I was making Raccoon look like a joke which really irked the big guy's ego, but I had no urge of toying around with him, so I leaped into the air, flipping over Raccoon, crashing behind him, delivering a neck chop, knocking Raccoon out cold. Next up was Birder, who would feel obligated to fight next, thinking that he could outspeed me, which I thought was quite funny. The only problem was, his speed was his downfall, because I used it to hurt himself. How? Well, whenever Birder rushed towards me, I locked in on his key, following his every movement all while setting up my fist for a super speeded gut punch. This strategy actually worked to perfection because when Birder comes running in at me, he runs right into my fist, crashing to his knees, gasping for air. Jice then wants to help, but thinks of the bigger picture, deciding to leave and update the captain and the emperor of what has happened. This then buys us some time to relocate the ship and discuss a plan. Bulma was shocked to see both me and Radis, but she was rather happy to see me as well. In fact, she tells me without my help, the Ginyu Force would have took all their Dragon Balls and probably killed them. I tell her no need to thank me, and that she'd do the same if she was in my shoes. This then leaves her with a smile as then we then continue on talking as Krillin then states that he knows a place that could benefit all of them, as he then recommends Elder Guru's Palace. So with that said, we move the ship arriving at Guru's as we then fill in Nail on what's happened. Nail trusts our intentions are mostly good, and then he looks at Raditz, letting us see Guru. Guru would then read my mind to understand exactly what's going on, but when he does, he finds out so much more. Guru is aware that I know how to save his people, and he immediately volunteers to unlock mine and Raditz's potential just to help save the planet. However, while he's unlocking it, he actually reveals so much more to me. A day surprise. Five saved. One human. All saving a planet of Namekians. I never thought I would see the day. Ha 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 ha. It's like what he just said flew right over my head. The power rushing inside of me. I've never felt something like it ever before. It was something immense, just like electricity just pouring through my body. I definitely wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for this power that was ahead of me. But I knew that I had to step up to the plate. But as we were doing this, 
Vegeta is pulling himself and Goku out of the healing tank as the two were obviously going to get Zenkai's, which in this case is rather massive. Goku is standing at a big 100,000 and Vegeta is at a large yet smaller number at 75,000, but these power levels don't matter at the moment. And this is because they both knew that they had to find the last Dragon Ball, so they had to reduce their power levels as low as they possibly could, as they too would then go searching all throughout the ship as they then find the last Dragon Ball right in Frieza's throne room, where Frieza was actually revealing his frustrations to Captain Ginyu. However, uh, luckily for Goku and Vegeta, Chase comes darting in in a panic. Jace informs him that their members have fallen, but this only pisses Frieza off even more. Ginyu, I'd advise you to handle this issue. I hate to get my own hands dirty with your blood. Ginyu stutters, but he says he'll get the job done, and then he'll see to it. As Frieza then laughs, Oh, you better be, I'm coming to clean up if you can't get the job done. So with that said, Frieza flies off as well, falling behind Jason. But with Frieza, Jace, and Captain Ginyu flying off, this makes it very easy for Goku and Vegeta to slide in and grab the last Dragon Ball that we need to make our wish, and they actually go to find the Dragon Team. They actually manage to do this much faster than Frieza because they have key sensing, and this means that we're actually able to use the Dragon Ball to revive our friends, and because both the Grand Elder and Nail are here, we definitely won't have a problem being translated by the Dragon Purunga, especially after Elder Guru puts up a field that can translate so we can talk ourselves. So we first then revive our good friend Tin Shinhan, second, the son of the Demon King Piccolo. Frieza would then angrily demand the last two members of the Ginyu Force to charge in and fight the Z Fighters. Jace then growls saying that they will pay for hurting Birder and Arkum. However, Vegeta laughs saying that they obviously don't care about their last member of Goldo. However, Vegeta is ignored as then the captain comes dashing in at me while Jace then leaps towards Gohan but is intercepted by Goku. So that in itself, Jace is getting a butt whooping here as I would then block Ginyu's fist with my forearm. I grab Ginyu by the arm, hip tossing him over me, stomping on his chest, causing him to cough up. I then squat down towards him as I cover his mouth with my hand. Your mom never taught you to cover your mouth when you cough? Dude, that's so... Can you then mumbles, however, the words aren't so clear. And then I and then ask him, Are you trying to say the word... Change? Causing Ginyu's eyes to bulge out of his head, knowing that there was no changing his fate, I then set off a blast that sets through the captain's skull. Meanwhile, Jace doesn't even know what hit him, as Goku is just you know beating him down it's actually vegeta though who gets the final blow on jace as when goku knocks him down with a meteor combination vegeta nails a gallic gun that completely evaporates the prince goku is obviously angry with both me and vegeta here but we're just looking at the much bigger issue here and that being freeze freeze's anger is boiling he's pissed steaming to the point where his rage can no longer be obtained as he then burst out as he charges the z fighters at his max power level of 530,000. this was way too much for us to handle but we can't just back down and luckily for us we had guru there being our healer but also an ace with just sitting there frieza overlooks him therefore guru is also able to unlock goku and vegeta's potential as well so as the fight continues Frieza realizes our strength is growing and somehow we're healing after major impact attacks. When he then notices Guru, but knowing Nail wasn't going to let him get attacked, so Nail would jump in. Nail literally only takes two punches as he then goes crashing down to the ground as I then go intercepting Frieza's final attack to kill Nail. And in fact, I felt my power rising as we were fighting and I knew it was only a matter of time until I actually surpassed his first form, or so I thought. As I was doing better, Frieza just continued to get more and more enraged, and as he did, he started beating the crap out of me more and more. So sadly, my power level never actually got to the point to where I was surpassing him, but I did give enough time for Piccolo and Nail to actually fuse, as this then puts Piccolo over a power level of 1 million. So he's easily going to wipe the floor with first form Frieza, giving us time to actually escape, well, most of us. Guru then actually grabs him by the arm, saying that I know all the secrets of saving his people, of Goku, and everyone else. But I still had many secrets to learn about myself, and before we could actually ask him what he meant, the Grand Elder would pass away, as Gohan then aids me in flying off and escaping the fight for Piccolo and Frieza to actually continue their battle. So thanks to Dende, we actually start healing up, who's back over there with Bulma. 
and Vegeta would actually have the idea of the green guy saying that he should come with us. But I disagree, saying that Dende is an amazing asset to the team, and really without Dende, we wouldn't have a team, and the only reason why he's here is because we didn't bring him to the fight. Frieza would have easily killed him. That's the same reason why Guru didn't come with us because he knew his time would be limited if we tried to take him because Frieza wasn't going to allow him to come with us. Vegeta though scoffed, but the plan ends up going with the way I wanted as Dende then would stay with Bulma and we would then once more myself, Goku and the others fly back to fight the Emperor. Speaking of, Frieza had no choice at this point but to transform into his ginormous second form which gives Piccolo and his new power a run for his money and the two were on a very even playing field but at the same time Piccolo's stamina starts decreasing and just when Piccolo gets stabbed by Frieza's horn in comes Goku with his Kaioken nailing Frieza directly in the jaw forcing him to go frying into the nearby mountains. Frieza though regroups quickly but he doesn't stay in his second form no instead he transforms into his alien looking form that being his third and at this point he's just running reckless he picks up his head saying that he hasn't been forced to use this much power since he was had to prove himself as the rightful emperor of his empire and once the words stop coming out of frieza's mouth the blast starts flying radis is shocked as well and so was vegeta as they were so unaware of frieza's hidden power however being distracted at this point wasn't a good thing because frieza's finger blitz comes blazing in at all angles and this actually goes towards vegeta as he then barely dodges but radis radis could not dodge the attack he simply wasn't fast enough therefore the beam hits radis right in the heart crashing backwards and this then irks me i grew to know radis quite well over the time that we were in the gravity ship training but this doesn't cause me to rush in at frieza instead i knew i had to keep my cool as radis would then give a speech to us to his brother radis more or less just repeats the same thing as vegeta but he adds one thing saying that his father would be proud of the fighter that he had become and he then takes his last breath frieza though laughs saying that radis was always a joke and maybe not the smartest idea but I tell Frieza, Radis wasn't a joke. The sorry empire he worked under was the joke. Frieza's eyes twitch as he then asks, Who the hell are you? And who the hell do you think you are talking to me like that? I gulp under my breath. I'm the guy who knows your every move, Frieza. And Frieza smirks before he could actually teleport in front of me, literally headbutting my skull. So I just take the beating as it then gives the others time to do three different things. Number one, Piccolo, Vegeta, and Krillin all head back to Dende to get healed up, which leads us to number two. Dende is healing Piccolo, which gives Vegeta the chance to exploit the many Zenkais from Krillin. And finally, the third thing, Goku's Spear Ball. Frieza isn't letting up. With each punch, it's getting heavier and hurts more. I'm just waiting for someone to help me because I really don't think I can take another 30 seconds of this fight. Luckily, Gohan, thinking I'm about to die, snaps. His anger boils and Gohan actually starts getting the best of third form Frieza, the same as he does in canon, but it was the fight that erupted Frieza. Getting beat by a Saiyan child, he felt no lower than he does right now as Frieza would then waste no more time as he then unleashes his final form. But before we could cover that, we need to skip back over to Vegeta, Piccolo, and Krill. Krillin tells Piccolo that my key has dropped immensely and that he can no longer feel it. And this is a big concern for him because he thinks I'm dead. And Piccolo actually has the concern as well, but Vegeta has no care in the world. After a couple of Zenkais, Vegeta claimed to be the legendary Super Saiyan. But Piccolo showed some concerns. He ignored what I said before, bringing Dende with them to the battlefield. And as the four within are traveling back, they felt Frieza's power jump as well. But Vegeta still shows no concern whatsoever. Now, getting back to the Frieza versus Gohan fight, Gohan rage has already about burned out, and Frieza's is just beginning. So Goku, in fact, begins to worry what if the spear bomb is taking too long and he's about to lose his son. Before Goku drops his arms, Vegeta screams at Frieza as Frieza would then ignore the prince, which gives Vegeta the opportunity to shoot a key blast right in the back of Frieza's head. And meanwhile, I'm being held up by Dende thanks to Piccolo and Krillin going against my wishes and bringing him to the battlefield. And when I actually get fully healed, my power level has completely skyrocketed. It's nowhere near the same 
it's crazy it's at a two million seven hundred thousand as then krillin then matches there's no way that i'm human but i just brushed that off not even worrying about that only focusing on the fight that it's in hand knowing that frieza is getting more and more deadly each second he's alive i let vegeta fight until he could no more then i telepathically tell goku when i say now drop the bomb frieza doesn't kill vegeta not yet at least frieza instead plans on watching the legendary super saiyan serve the same fate as his father blowing up the planet with the prince so with that said, Frieza stops in his tracks as I slowly approach him until I'm looking down at him. I feel cold chills shivering down my spine until adrenaline kicks into overdrive as me and Frieza start scrapping. I'm getting every feeling that I have ever had wanted to have in my life. This is the fight that I've dreamed and watched the most out of my entire life. So I'm just, I'm a little bit fanboy, but at the same time, I've never took something so serious. I'm giving everything I've got. I grab Frieza's hand, pulling him closer as I then take my boot, blasting him with a Kamehameha. Yes, a Kamehameha with my feet. Knowing I have to give out all the works, I'm just doing everything I can. And this works just long enough for Frieza to go crashing back, giving me the perfect opportunity to give the energy I have to Goku so that he can drop the spirit bomb as I then scream, now Goku, Frieza turns back his head as it is utter shock at the massive ball of energy that is coming towards him. But no cliffhangers here, like in canon, the emperor of the universe survives this spirit bomb. Rising from the crater, Frieza is looking for revenge. As Frieza then angrily screams, hey, I will not be defeated by some damn monkeys. As he then continues to get enraged, he then lifts Gohan into the air. All I can think of, this isn't supposed to happen. This isn't how this is supposed to go. But I can't stop it. It's all happening so fast. As Gohan then screams, screaming for his daddy, for Mr. Dragonstar. As he then gets pulled into the air as Frieza pulls the trigger. And Gohan explodes right in front of our eyes. Goku completely loses control. His anger is boiling, even to the point that he's even more madder than he was in canon, to the point that this is his son that just got blown up. But Goku wasn't the only one here. My frustrations were uncontrollable. I couldn't control anything that's happened. I've grown to love these characters as family rather than just loving their stories that I've watched on TV and read for my entire life. Watching Gohan, I felt him passing. I felt like I was losing a little brother. And Frieza, Frieza was gonna pay! Frieza starts to laugh, proud of what he's done. But the celebration is cut rather short as the aura then starts to surround myself and Goku. The aura then grows larger and larger. Gravel then starts to fly as lightning then starts to strike the ground. As then our aura begins to flash yellow followed by our hair flashing back and forth between black and yellow as well, until both Goku and myself were completely surrounded in a golden aura when it hits me. I'm a Super Saiyan? And that is where we're going to be leaving off part 6 of What If Dragon Star Was In Dragon Ball. I really hope you guys enjoyed this longer video. It's been an absolute blast to write, so please show your support by hitting that like button, commenting down below, and subscribing to the channel, as well as hitting that bell icon to get alerts whenever I upload. And if you guys want to see part 7 early, consider joining the Patreon. I mean, just for a dollar you can get this video as early, as well as any other video I upload, as well as exclusive videos such as What If Dragon Star Was Bad. Or if you just want to chat, hang out, or play some games, I recommend you go over there and join the Discord or follow me on Twitter. So with that said, Dragon Star Productions is out.